and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm an artist attempting to do this full time. And today I'm going to be painting a master copy of John Singer Sargent's self-portrait. So we're going to see that in a moment. I am doing that because I'd really like to get better at portrait painting. It's something that I struggle with a little. I do more paintings of animals, some wildlife and pet portraits, and I do some landscapes, but portraits of people is a bit of a new thing for me, and I've been looking for ways to try and improve that, and it's not so easy. So that's why I'm doing these master copies. I've got one I'm going to chat to you about in a little while, and then the John Singer Sargent portrait we will see come together. So let's get started. Now there are quite a few reasons why you might want to do a master copy and I've seen lots of artists do them before. However, the reason I want to do one is that I just want to try and get better at painting portraits. I'm not doing this with the intention that I'm going to paint exactly the same as John Singer Sargent, although who wouldn't like to paint like that? <laughs> But my main focus for this really is just to try and simplify portrait painting and make things a little bit easier for myself because this is definitely an area in which I struggle. Now I feel like the reason I struggle so much with portraits is that there seems to be so many decisions to make before you even start. Now this might be a problem specifically for me because I definitely overthink my work but I figure there's just so many choices when it comes to how you're going to paint a portrait either from life or from a photograph and it gets a little bit overwhelming. For example, am I going to keep things detailed or try and keep the portrait really loose? Do I want to work with a high key? Am I going to compress the values or go for a lot of contrast? Do I want the colours to be true to life or am I going to try and make them a little bit more luminous? There's just so many decisions to make that it gets a little bit complicated and my painting as a result looks a tad messy and it just doesn't really go the way that I wanted it to. And the reason that I like master copies so much is that someone before me has already made all those decisions. The composition's decided, the colour schemes decided, the values are all there. I don't need to make any decision whatsoever. All I need to do is try and replicate what I see as best as I can and just focus on creating a really nice portrait. So before we get on to the main painting, I have a short interlude where I wanted to discuss my practice attempt before we move on to that. This is Lady Agnew. This is a master copy of John Singer Sargent's painting. Obviously the face is very different to the one that I'm painting now, but the point was just to do master copies of John Singer Sargent. So I started with this and I didn't record any of the process, which is a great strategy for a budding YouTube artist. So I knew that portrait painting would be difficult and I thought I want to give this a, a try without filming it and without the distraction of, of the video. So this is what I did. And I thought I'd go over some of the issues that I have with it that I want to try and avoid in the next painting. So that's what I'm going to discuss now. I will timestamp this video. So if you want to jump right ahead to the John Singer Sargent master copy, then you can do that. But if you want to stick around and figure out with me some of the things that didn't go so well with this portrait and how I want to try and change that for the next, then that's great also let's start doing that. So there are three things that I decided I wanted to try and focus on in my next painting. I'm sure there are more than three things when it comes to what was wrong with this piece, but I wanted to keep it simple, not overcomplicate things. So number one on the list is the drawing. Now, I don't think I did too badly in that respect, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I didn't use a grid or trace it with this, I just tried to um, size it up and get the proportions right the first time. It was difficult. <laughs> I don't think it, it went too bad, however I was definitely second guessing myself when I got towards the end of the painting. It felt like some things were a little bit off. I think the face is a little bit too wide, especially here. I definitely shaved off some of the side as I was trying to paint this. 
Um, so I don't think I got it spot on, but it wasn't too bad. I wanted to avoid that in my next painting, so I've reverted back to the grid. I do want to get rid of the grid eventually. I'd like to be able to just paint by kind of just getting the proportions right the first time. This is my paintbrush when I do that, I'm imagining painting, not left-handed, don't know why I'm doing that. Um, so I want to get rid of the grid in future. Um, however, I also think it's important to prioritise when you're practising and for me the priority was just getting the paint down and doing a nice portrait without it getting really muddy and messy and over complicated. The priority wasn't to do a perfect drawing without using any help, or any grids or any tracing. So I don't mind just doing that for this time. I can always do another practice later down the line where I will try and draw without a grid and that can be the focus. But it's not the focus today, so we're not doing that. So in my portrait of John Singer Sargent, the master copy of that, I'm going to do a grid and make sure everything's in the right place before we get started on that one. So second thing on the list of things I wanted to change about this was I don't think I got the values quite right, especially here along this side of the face. So the shadowing in the real portrait is quite light anyway, and so I did want to keep it light, but I don't think I did it quite right. <laughs> I think the values here are a bit too similar, and so the face looks a bit wider than it is so I don't think that is all down to the drawing I think that's probably to do with the values as well so I want to make sure in my next painting that I am a bit more consistent with the values and I am paying more attention <laughs> and I don't have any excuse for this because I wasn't distracted by filming so <laughs> and the third thing on the list is that I want to focus on how I put the paint down and do it in a proper a la prima way. So my intention with this was to paint a la prima and just kind of put the paint down and then leave it and I didn't actually end up doing that. I ended up layering a few areas and putting paint on top of paint without really leaving it to dry in between and so a lot of areas ended up quite muddy as you might expect <laughs> from that approach. I think I just got a bit stuck between the two things. I wasn't layering and I wasn't doing a la prima, I was just mushing everything together. And so it didn't quite work um, as planned. And some areas are definitely a bit muddy as a result of that. So in the next painting, I figured I needed to make a choice and either do layers or do a la prima. Can't do both together. <laughs> and so I have decided to try and do this a la prima, just put the paint down and try and leave it alone because I do not have the patience for layers at the moment, unfortunately. I am just far too impatient to do that. So I'm going to stick with the a la prima and hope for the best. I think that's probably enough rambling for now. So let's get back to the painting. So I've only ever attempted one other master copy before the ones we're watching today and that was Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring which was a little bit half-hearted so this is probably the first time I've really sat down to try and do it properly. <laughs> I think I struggled a little more with the Lady Agnew master copy because it was hard for me to understand how it had been painted in the first place. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video that I'm not doing this to copy the way Singer Sargent painted, I'm doing this really just to get better at portraits so I didn't need to necessarily put the paint down in the exact right order. But it does help I think if you have a little bit of an idea of how it was painted. and. I really struggled to figure out how it was done with Lady Agnew, whether it was layered or another style. I mean, I'm sure if I looked it up, I could probably find out some more information. That just shows my laziness, the fact that I don't know how it was done. But I found it a challenge because it wasn't immediately obvious how the paint was applied. And so I couldn't really figure out how I needed to do it in my own copy. Whereas the one that I'm doing right now, it seemed a lot more straightforward and the process seemed really natural. So I think moving forward, I definitely want to focus on a la prima portraits first rather than layered portraits and we'll go from there. It was really nice to find a portrait that suited more of an a la prima style and it kind of made me realise that perhaps working in layers just isn't for me and maybe that is why I've been struggling so much with portraits in the past. 
I feel like I've been fighting against the style that I really want to paint in, which is a la prima. It suits me down to the ground because I do not have the patience for layers. I really like those immediate results that you get with a la prima and I like the loose feel of the paintings when you kind of just have to stick with the first brush stroke that you put down and you can't really mess about with it too much. And I know when I've tried to do portraits in the past, I've worked in layers uh, and I have taken ages over the process and perhaps that is why I have found it such a struggle. It definitely felt like a little bit of an epiphany doing this portrait. The fact that I found it so much easier to paint in this way and to add colour this way, working from dark to light and do it in one pass, it was a really great experience and it's given me an idea of how I might approach, approach, <laughs> approach portraits in the future. Whereas the Lady Agnew portrait was a bit more difficult for me to follow, this Singer Sergeant self-portrait was so much easier to follow. I felt like I could see the vision behind the portrait and it was almost like I was following a map. Everything felt really natural and it was more obvious where I needed to put colours down and what order I needed to do things in. It wasn't actually until I finished this portrait that I thought, I haven't had to think about this process at all. It was so straightforward. I just went from dark to light. I worked in the areas that I felt naturally I should be working on next. And before I knew it, I was finished. So this was a really great experience. And I'm really glad that I chose this portrait to do because if I'd have gone for another portrait that was maybe done in layers or maybe was a little bit more complex, then I probably would have struggled with it. And this would have been another write off in terms of portrait practice. And I guess that shows the importance of picking the right kind of reference material to work from. I know I've got a long way to go when it comes to portrait painting, but this definitely felt like it was a step in the right direction. All of this isn't to say that this John Singer Sargent self-portrait was an absolute breeze and that I did everything perfectly, because that is not correct. <laughs> there are definitely things that went wrong in here as well, and I know that if I tried this again, maybe several years down the line with more experience, then I would be able to do a better job. And I know that I'm not doing it complete justice yet. However, I think it's important when you're practicing to make the most of those small successes and congratulate yourself every now and then when something goes a little better than you expected. And I felt like that was the case with this painting and I really need to make the most of that because with portraits I know I'm always very hard on myself when it comes to the finished result. I'm always deciding what I don't like about something and I spend less time looking at what actually went well so I wanted that to be different in this portrait and to take some time to notice what I enjoyed about it because that's really useful as well and that will be helpful when I make portraits in the future that are not master copies. You'll notice that I spent a long time working on this portrait in quite dark values. It might be a bit difficult to pick up some of the differences in this because of the video that I use. I film this on my phone so it's probably not the best quality but I spent a lot of time working in really dark tones and I was trying to be quite conscious of the values in this, knowing that I didn't quite get them right with Lady Agnew. It was really interesting to see those subtle shifts in the shadow side of the face, which, um, like I said, might be difficult to see on camera, but they're there in real life. <laughs> um, and it was nice to try and focus on those small changes in value. This was definitely another benefit of doing a master copy for me, noticing those subtle shifts in value. Usually when I do a portrait, I find it most difficult going from a really light area to a really dark area because it tends to look muddy in the middle where I've tried to blend things together. And looking at this, I could see that there were some kind of half tones between each value, which helped to make that change from a light area to a dark area. And it was more obvious noticing how it was built up gradually and there was quite a lot of tones used rather than just going straight from dark to light. 
that will be really useful for me in future portraits so already this was a great experience in doing a master copy it was giving me lots of ideas for future paintings and I'd only just done the shadow side of the face so I would definitely say doing master copies is a worthwhile exercise this gave me so much to work with already and that is just one of the points that I'll take from this Another thing that I found quite interesting about this process was realizing how little information I needed to include, particularly in the shadow side of the face, in order to make a convincing portrait. I am definitely one for including too much detail. Although I love loose portraits and I would like to work in a looser style, I tend to do a lot of my work from photographs and that is terrible when it comes to adding too much detail for me especially there's just so much detail in there and even when i'm trying to keep things loose i do end up using more detail because it's available for me to see especially if you zoom in you can see way too much and so things get quite complicated and what i really liked about this is that i didn't have to include hardly any detail in the shadow side so there were those value changes those subtle shifts in tone that i was talking about and you can see kind of the outline of the eye on that side of the face but other than that it's really quite simple and it was pretty amazing to see how he was able to achieve such a convincing portrait with so little information on that shadow side of the face so that's definitely something that I'll be taking forward in future portrait paintings I think it will be important to find some similar paintings to this or ones with a similar palette so that I can practice this again in future. I definitely have a habit of doing things once and then moving on to something completely different. So I think to really see an improvement with my portrait painting that I really ought to do this as a regular exercise. So I think going forward, I need to make sure I'm leaving myself time to do this so that I don't leave months in between practice attempts again and then wonder why I'm struggling when it comes to painting portraits. I've found something here that kind of works and so I think that's important to keep going with in future and make sure I'm practicing in a logical way where I'm hopefully getting better with each attempt. Another useful thing I will take from this exercise is that I didn't need a huge amount of colours in order to create this portrait. I used a limited palette for me. <laughs> I still had nine colours in it, but that is limited for me. <laughs> I used titanium white, ivory black, raw umber, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, lemon yellow and yellow ochre in order to create this and I probably didn't have to use all of those I just put them out because I felt like they'd give me a good range and it was interesting to see how few colors I needed to actually create convincing skin tones I think where I've gone wrong in other portraits is that I've had too many colors available and I've really overcomplicated things making everything quite colorful and rainbow like when it really doesn't need it and especially when you're working on a smaller scale all of those colors together can look quite messy and they don't tie in very well so it was nice to do this with a reduced palette and to see how simple you could make things. I also discovered that I quite enjoy working at this scale with uh, portraits so this is about six by eight inches now I still want to be able to paint at different sizes I don't want to paint faces at six by eight inches for the rest of my career as an artist but it is useful to know what it comes naturally to you and what you enjoy doing and I think moving forward with practice attempts I will probably stick at this scale for a while to try and really get it down and figure out what I'm doing with portraits and then once I feel more confident in that I'll be able to expand out and do all kind of different sizes and see what fits me best. I really enjoyed adding in some of the lighter colours when it came to the other side of the face. 
I think you're kind of hoping that things are going to come together when you're just working on the shadow side but you really start to see that portrait take form once those lighter colors are added and you just got to kind of trust the process and hope that you're going to get there but I think this was probably one of my favorite parts adding in the side of the face and then adding in the highlights at the end. So I thought I would reiterate a point that I made at the start of this video which was concerning why I wanted to do a master copy in the first place and what benefit I thought there would be to doing a master copy and that for me is that an artist before me, in this case John Singer Sargent, has already made all of the decisions when it comes to the painting and so all I need to do is paint what I see in front of me. I don't need to make any decisions with regards to how to interpret a photograph or how to interpret uh, a face if I was studying from life. All I need to do is paint what is already there and all those decisions are already made. Now I know in the future when I'm working either from life or from a photograph that I'll need to be able to figure out how to use the skills I've gained today in interpreting a photo for myself but this to me is just a first step in that process and it's so important and I'm really glad that I, I did it. I know it's not quite the same as painting something for yourself when you're doing a master copy but you are learning something even if you don't realise that you're learning something. To summarize some of the things that I have learned from this process, first of all, one of the big points is that I don't need to include all the detail. It is okay to leave detail out and to keep things looser and doing a master copy like this was a really great way of doing that because I know I definitely include too much detail when I'm doing things myself. Particularly with the shadow side here, it was really interesting to see how little detail I actually needed and just a few subtle shifts in value can indicate detail and can suggest features without you having to literally paint everything in. I've also learned that it is okay to compress values and that that's a good alternative to what I sometimes end up doing in my portraits. I've definitely found in the past when I've been working on my own self-portrait that I've struggled when I have a really bright highlight next to quite a dark shadow. I always get a muddy mess, it doesn't matter how I approach it, I always make a mess. <laughs> and I think compressing the values is probably one of the ways that I could go about resolving that. The highlight didn't need to be so bright, the shadow didn't need to be so dark, those could be compressed so it made more sense in a painting. And I think getting first-hand experience of that in a master copy rather than just reading about it or hearing about it is definitely better. The fact that I now have that first-hand experience should hopefully make it easier to translate into my own portraits when I attempt them again in the future. I've learnt that I don't need lots of colours for a successful portrait and that I can achieve a good portrait with a limited palette. And I've also learnt that I really enjoy painting in this style and that's probably one of the biggest things to take from this is that I really enjoyed this Alla Prima portrait much more so than I have approached, approached? <laughs> much more so than I have enjoyed painting layered portraits or portraits in a different style and that has given me a lot of encouragement and when I do portraits in the future I'll definitely stick to the style I think to begin with. I can always move on to layers, like I don't think I want to rule them out completely but for now I know that this is what I enjoy doing so why not do more of it? This process also got me thinking a little bit about something that I hadn't noticed so much before but when I paint pet portraits rather than portraits of people I do paint in an Alla Prima style more often than not. I work from dark to light and I try to complete the painting in one pass where possible and I cannot understand why I decided to approach painting people in a completely different way. Like it seems so obvious that I could have just carried on what I was doing with pet portraits and it doesn't make any sense to me that I decided I would just go all out and, and paint in a different style. 
And doing this has made me realize that that is what I enjoy doing, that I enjoy the Ella Prima side and I have more experience in it. And so I need to trust the process a little bit more and take what I've learned from pet portraits and translate them into people portraits rather than feeling like I need an entire new style to paint a different subject. I think perhaps I was a bit overwhelmed with painting people because it was something new and so I felt like I had to approach it differently. But doing something like this shows me that it is possible to do a portrait in an Alla Prima style in a similar way to how I would do my pet portraits. So that's something I'd like to focus on and perhaps that way everything will be a bit more cohesive and it will all look like the same artist painted it because I'll be using a similar style in everything that I do. I hope you've enjoyed watching this portrait come together. I will leave you in peace now to watch the end of it as I add some finishing touches. I really enjoyed doing this master copy and I would definitely like to do some more in the future. It was a really great exercise and if you have any thoughts on it or any comments or if you've tried master copies for yourself then please leave me a comment below. It's always lovely to read those comments and I really appreciate everyone's support so far with this channel in subscribing, in liking these videos and leaving comments below them. It's all really helpful and I really appreciate it. If you would like to see more art related content like this and you haven't subscribed already then please do so. <laughs> I will be back again soon with another video. I am not sure what the topic will be. It might be something completely different next time. Perhaps a plein air landscape. I think that was what I was planning to do in April and it's now July so that's probably overdue. Anyway. I shall let you enjoy the rest of this portrait coming together. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.